Good morning, uh, everybody. It's Graham once again from Unearthed. Another Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, wet, miserable, and blustery. So no better time to do part two of the, uh, you know, gaining permission, losing permission film uh, from last week. This is moving on slightly from that uh, last week's episode and adding a few more bits of information, advice, and guidance that you detectives may find useful. Now. Um, we spoke about last week about how to gain permission, how to start small and grow from that and how easy it is actually to lose uh, detecting permission, as some of us know. Um, just a bit of advice around once you gain uh, permission. Now, there's a lot of detectives that I know personally that really sort of uh, go the extra mile with their permissions and their landowners. Uh, a lot of uh, you detectives that watch this will probably have already made uh, firm friends uh, with some of the landowners and farmers over the years, uh, you know, on personal terms, names, uh, contact details, phone numbers, uh, you name it. Uh, I think it's crucial, absolutely crucial, that once you gain your first farm or your first paddock or your first small holding or whatever it may be, is to make sure you get the contact details directly from the landowner farmer. So you may have his mobile number or his landline, just so you can keep in touch with him and get the dialogue dialogue going between uh, the pair of you right from the start so you're not bothering him i mean we'll give you an example we had a farm actually not too far from where i'm sat it's only a few miles away uh, and the permission was granted verbally uh it was verbal he didn't want to sign any paperwork to say we could come on he was just saying yeah you can go on it's a verbal agreement and every time we went detecting on there because we did find one or two nice coins and artifacts uh, after about the fourth or fifth time he got fed up of us door knocking on a Sunday morning or a Saturday afternoon or whatever it may have been. So we, we, we found out later that he's seen it as being a bit pestering from us. So what we did, or what I did, I got his contact details, his mobile number, and I just dropped him a text. Hi, it's Graham, detectorist. We came last week, so I'm not going to bother you coming knocking on your door. Are we okay to go on this afternoon for a few hours? Within 20 minutes, half an hour, I got a text message back. Yeah, you're fine couple of times when we tried it uh, no no i don't want you on today because we've got we're, we're lambing or whatever it might have been uh, which is really good it's keeping in touch and that dialogue going with your farmers and that trust starts developing and of course uh later on in in the years um we you know every christmas we dropped him a bottle of his favorite uh, drink off which at the time was whiskey um you know we just got uh, two of us two or three of us together and clubbed in uh maybe i think i think i remember putting a little hamper together for him just to just to just to say thanks for letting us on detecting because if it wasn't for his 80, 80 to 100 acres at the time we'd have been pretty much struggling for for semi-decent land to detect on so it's always good to keep your your landowners and farmers on your side and it's a two-way street it's a partnership remember um there's too many detectors sadly that'll go onto a farm and they'll detect the hell out of it and then they'll just disappear. They won't even have the courtesy to say to the farmer, you know what, we're not finding a great deal on there. We may not be back, or we may be back. That leaves a bit of taste in the landowners and farmers' mouths. Believe me, it does. I've spoke to many, I have many landowners and farmers that are friends, and they tell me that they've had detectorists on in the past that have camped out on certain fields for weeks on end, uh, and then just disappeared. Not even showing the farmers what they're finding, and then they, they move on to the next farm five miles down the road, or wherever it might be, and they do the same then. It's not the way to go. Make sure that contact and the dialogue between your farmers and your landowners is always constant. So, you know, if he agrees to it, get his mobile number. You know, once you've got that agreement in place that you can drop him a text to say, I'm thinking of coming tomorrow afternoon for a few hours. Is it OK? And then it gives that time. I mean, I wouldn't do it on the same day as uh, as you're, going, you're thinking of going detecting because he might not answer. He might be too busy. So if you can do it a day before, that's even better. It gives him a chance to reply when he sits down. To have his tea because you've got to remember certain times of the year farmers and landowners are extremely busy people uh, they don't really want to be bothered with answering doors to uh, detectorists etc etc they just want to be left alone to do the job so if you can do it 24 hours previous you can get your detecting day planned just drop them a text message i mean even some detectorists i know drop them drop the farmers emails even so whatever works for you between you and the landowner farmer is the way forward and of course you know, whatever you do, if, you, if you're detecting on a particular farm and over the years it becomes less and less productive for fines, uh, don't necessarily think that's the end of it because that farmer could uh, in the future start replowing his fields and replenishing his fields 
He may regrass his fields at some point when the grass is a bit poor. He might stick the plough into it one year and bring a load of nice coins and artefacts to the surface that you can actually have almost like having a new field to detect on again. So I wouldn't ever leave farms hanging and, and say, you know what, we won't go back there again. Um, you know, it's common courtesy to just make sure that dialogue between you and the farmer is constant. And if, if you decide for whatever reason that that particular farm isn't really worth going back to, well, just say to the farmer that, you know, we may not be coming back. Uh, we've got some other permission somewhere else. You know, thanks very much for letting us on over the years. Um, you know, part on good terms, have that dialogue going because you, and I always always keep farms in your back pocket because you never know when you're going to need them. New machines come out that the performance levels are better than the ones that you were using in the past on these particular farms. So, so ticking a new machine on, look at the Equinox, how the Equinox has been on some of these farms here in Cumbria on the pasture fields where it's been strewn with cork and hot rocks and particular detectors that do really badly on it and all people start finding is hot rocks and cork. They come off disgruntled, the Equinox is developed and, and, and made, people buy them, go on these new, uh, go on these old fields with the new machines and it's like bringing a new field back to life. He ignores the hot rocks and cork and starts picking the hammered coins up in between. It's like having new fields again. That could happen quite easily happen again in the future with performance levels of detectors improving all the time so never really dismiss a farm and of course if you leave the farm hanging and the farmer thinks well i don't know i've not seen them lads for two or three years i don't know if they're going to come on or not um it leaves that sort of gray area where new detectors might come along and say oh i fancy having a go at that farm and they and they pluck the courage up because not everybody enjoys door knocking on farms believe me there's a lot of nervous people out there that really shy away from doing that job there's only sort of the um you know there's a lot of people that don't like doing it and there's a there's a hardened few that don't mind you know don't mind being rejected um because the farmers can only say two things yes or no well some might say i don't know come back in the future but there's so there's three things that they can say yes no don't know um but you know there's some people out there afraid actually believe it or not to to, to actually door knock and that's just because it's just the way their nature is but you know never leave a farm hanging because that farm might think well these two lads that came they might come back um and when a new detectorist comes along he, he might think well hang on, i've got two lads coming on even though i've not seen them for three years not knowing that these two guys will never come back again so it's always worth just mentioning to your landowners and your farmers that you know if you are packing up on that particular farm just just you know please let them know uh, because there's nothing worse than hanging on and of course again there's nothing worse than going on a farm blitzing the fields for day, days and weeks on end like some detectorists do and then just disappearing into thin air the farmers think hang on a minute he's come out on that field i've drove the tractor past three or four times this week and they've been on there but they've never come to the dawn and shown me what they're finding or they've never told me they're even actually going on so so there is a rogue element at times in the detecting world where people just think once they've, once they've got permission they can just do what they want and go where they want and, and, and come and go and dismiss a farm at their leisure that's not the way to do it that isn't the way to do it at all and farmers become pretty peeved off uh, about that about that happening and that's a story that i hear time and time again unfortunately um so yeah keep your farmers close keep your landowners close that dialogue the more you speak to the farmer the more you show him what you're finding the more trust that they develop and they think you know what she's not a bad lass he's not a bad lad i'm going to let them back on you know some farmers and we've had farmers in the past where you know you're going to their farmer's door cold calling they've never seen you they've never seen you at all uh you know that you're brand new to them you could be anybody so the trust the trust element is like you know minute and they may only say to you well you can go on that field there which is the one outside the farm so you can maybe keep an eye on you and you know you can't start thinking oh i want them fields i don't think if he if he says to you that farmer or she says to you that uh, the, the lady farmer or whoever it may be landowner I'll, I'll give you one field you do that one field but you make sure at the end of the day you show them what you found off the back of that field they'll be interested to see what the history is like coming off their farms anyway so they'll have an interest well i never knew there's stuff like that on our fields and then your trust is developed and of course the landowner is entitled to everything that you find on there of course uh, non-treasure items treasures a bit little bit different of course because we know the laws around that don't we um but make sure you offer the farmer is you know his chance to take any coins and artifacts that he wishes because it's come off his land uh, or you have the agreement the 50 50 agreement in place where you're entitled to 50 50 split of the fines that come off 
um, particular areas. Now you've got to remember the 50-50 agreement between you and the landowner could change. So we've got one up here in Cumbria that wants 80% of everything you find. So it's an 80-20 or, or the cost or the value of the particular find. Say it's a single coin that you find, a rare coin. Uh, this particular farmer wants 80% of the value and the detectorist is left with 20%. That's just the way that farmer operates. Now you choose as the detectorist if you want to continue to go on there or not. Most farms, it's a 50-50 agreement. That's the way it works. But some, you know, be prepared to, for some farmers to say a little bit different. And we've got one there, 80-20. So, um, so that's a, a little bit of a, a side story for you. But yeah, make sure you're keeping. If that farmer says to you, I want you to just do one field, you just do that one field. If you don't find a great deal, well, so what? You go back at the end of the day. If it's not too late, just to show them what you found. Or you go back if it's a little bit late and he's not around. Make sure you go back and call in if it's not too far and show them what you found. And then the trust develops and then they'll allow you to go on other fields. And they'll, they'll and eventually, you know, you might get a chance to do, the, to do the whole farm. How good's that? So, you know, that dialogue, get that dialogue going. If you can get an agreement in place, get it in place. A lot of farms do it verbally. They don't want to be signing pieces of paper. Some farmers do. They like the, you know, they like the the strict um, way of doing things, and they like the the bit of paperwork with your signature and their signature on, saying that you've been granted permission. There's a 50/50 split between anything you find with the with the agreed landowner, etc., etc. Happy days. But just be prepared for for a lot of farmers just to verbally allow you to detect, and that's just the way things are. So there you go, folks. I hope that's been of help. Um, there is another uh, episode of Detecting Talk next week, uh, which is going to be based around some naughty behaviour or some criminal behaviour uh, from a couple of, uh, well, well, the thieves, basically. They're not detectorists, they're thieves. So watch out for that one uh, and stay safe this weekend and good luck if you're out through the week detecting. I won't be, but, uh, but I'm sure a few of you will. So enjoy it. Bye for now.